Welcome back, hopefully, to the Witcher Math channel. It's been a while. You know, I had brain surgery a few months ago and uh, just thankful to be here. And I thought, hey, what the heck? We've been talking about reciprocals and having trouble with words like factors and multiples in class. So I'm hoping with the help of a little timer, a little stopwatch, and a little uh, bulletproof coffee here, um, I can keep this short and sweet. And also by not hitting the start button until I decide I'm going to start with real content. Okay, let me take a drink real quick. Mm. Ah, it sure cooled off. It doesn't taste as good as I thought it would. But hey, here we go. Ready? And go. I'm going to try to keep this like in the five to seven minute range. And I'll try to put the good stuff at the beginning, like get right to the point. Reciprocals, or as they're often called in textbooks from the 1980s, multiplicative inverse. Okay, they're still called that today, but I thought that was funny. Here we go. Um, it's just two numbers that uh, multiply, and their product is one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Woo! When you put uh, butter in your coffee, it could cause a problem with your radio voice. So here we go. So this is maybe the easiest, most recognizable form of a reciprocal. Excuse me, going off to the side here. Woo! <coughs> <coughs> that was like 10 feet off the mic. I hope that didn't scare you. Anyway, two factors whose product is one, okay? We learned this in grade school. It's called something like flip it and flip it and multiply or flip and multiply. <laughs> I don't know, however you learned it. It's different all over the world, okay? But uh, bottom line is it's two, no two numbers multiply and they equal one. Where some confusion happens here is, uh, for example, if I have a mixed number, how do I flip that? And then all of a sudden, if you were sleeping the day they talked about uh, converting to an improper fraction, all of a sudden there's nothing there to flip. Like, how do I flip it? Is it one and three halves? No. Okay. So we need to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. Okay. So let's do a quick review of that which would look something like this. If I have this, I'm going to go, if that's a whole number, a numerator, and denominator, I'll go denominator times the whole number plus the numerator all over the denominator. That's how that's going to work. Here's an example. Denominator times whole number plus numerator all over the denominator order of operations we're going to circle the terms here that's three plus two which is five we keep the denominator five thirds now i can get the reciprocal by using my old method of flipping but i had to add a step okay so when you have a whole number there or a mixed number you have to do a little extra a little extra hope you're up for it okay so that's one thing what about, uh, oh, let's say there's a decimal, which I cover in a complete separate video, which is amazing. You should totally check it out. But if you're in the habit of saying decimals the wrong way, this is tough. If, like if you say 0.4, ugh, that's how we say it downtown, but, but not in the classroom. In the classroom, we would say four tenths, and then you... Oh, geez. Decline that call. Man, four, four, what's going on here? Four tenths should make you think of a fraction. And then you know what? You could simplify that. And then you can find the reciprocal. Okay, so decimals have reciprocals too. Because a reciprocal does not mean flip a fraction. It means two numbers that multiply to equal one. Those could be fractions, decimals, whole numbers, whatever. Okay? 
what it looks like is this. It looks like flipping and multiplying fractions, but that's not actually what's happening. Okay? It's just we're trying to find a way to get two numbers to multiply and equal one. This comes in handy in lots of contexts. Contexts. That's a tough word to say. Let's just slow down and say it the right way. Here we go. Another page. Watch out. There we go. Okay, so continuing on this topic of reciprocals. Okay, let's get crazy now. Let's say, uh, oh, let's see, multiplicative inverse, whole numbers, good fractions. Now, if here's an algorithm for you, which is just a set way of doing things for reciprocal, means some number times the inverse of that number is one. Okay, number inverse multiply and you see how we get multiplicative inverse but let's say hmm okay oh here's a side trip let's go on a side trip one is its own reciprocal reciprocal <laughs> <laughs> this video is a disaster, and now look what's going on. Oh, ah, so much for goals. Hashtag math goals. Yeah. Hashtag fail. But I'm going to keep going because it's perseverance. Not perseverance. Okay, anyway. One times one is one. That is a unique situation. No other number can say that. So good job, one. Yay. Good job, one. Okay. So we've got all that. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey, what about... Uh, I guess that covers it. You know what? Let's look back. Let me review here. I'm looking at my notes. See, I have all these notes over here. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Trying to make it pretty colors and simple for you. <clears throat> Reciprocals. Multiplicative inverse. Two numbers multiply to make a product of one. Um, decimals have reciprocals. Mixed numbers have reciprocals. You just have to convert them to improper fractions first. Decimals, you have to say them the right way, and then it will be a fraction. Hey, let's do one more example there. Oh, no, there's no reciprocal to that. It's a decimal. Well, how about if you say 23 hundredths? There. Now it has a reciprocal, right? Yay. Okay, good review. There's an algorithm or a set way of doing it, meaning I can plug anything into here. And let's say I have one-third, and I want to know what's the reciprocal of one-third. So I put one over one-third, and now I'm confused. But then you have to go back and remember. I'm going to switch to green now to keep you awake. Did it work? Sorry, I didn't think so. Okay, but if I go one divided by one-third, because that's what this says, one divided by one-third, or it also says how many one-thirds fit into one. Well, of course you would answer three with this because it's so simple. But what if you didn't know? What if you didn't know this? Well, when we're learning fraction division, yet another fabulous video on this channel, we're taught what? Flip and multiply. That's your first like subliminal exposure maybe to reciprocals. So if I have a division problem like this and my third grade teacher says flip it and multiply, I'm gonna, or some people say, this one's funny, this one's funny. Keep, switch, keep, flip, switch. 
I hear that a lot. I teach seventh grade. Okay, I hear a lot of people say this, and I say, well, why? Why does that work? How does that work? <clears throat> Usually, they don't, they don't know. They just learn this little trick. So keep, we're going to switch. Maybe I got that wrong. Keep, switch, flip. I don't know. That's why I don't use it or teach it. But then when I flip that over, what's 1 times 3? Three? 3? What? Okay. But then I take this back here. You might have thought I screwed up there, right? And I do lots of times. But if I take my 1 third and my answer to this funky fraction over here, guess what? They are reciprocals, okay? So that's why keep, flip, switch works or whatever you want to call it. So there we go. That's how we can apply the algorithm to find the fraction. That's kind of like a proof of why that flipping works. <laughs> why that flipping works. And where's my timer? That's my little girl right there, LB. Come on, come on, girl. Ooh, I'm at 10 minutes and 22 seconds. And that means even if I forgot something, I'm done. Thanks for watching and putting up with my short attention span. I hope yours is equally short and we get along great. Bye for now. Thank you.